Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Well, if you're tuned in today for another one of my classic rants, then I'm afraid that's not really the show I've got lined up for you today. <laughs> um, because we've worked our way through um, a lot of the major manufacturers uh, in, uh, in model kits. Uh, I'm not doing all of them, and um, somebody misinterpreted what I said uh, in my last video. Perhaps I wasn't clear enough, but uh, in, the, in the one that I had the, uh, the rant about some of the Chinese manufacturers, and I said that I didn't have massive experience of all of them, and I meant that there were others that I hadn't covered, so perhaps I wasn't very clear, because I didn't include AMK, uh, Gecko, um, Ryefield, or Dragon. So there was quite a few that I didn't mention, and it wouldn't be fair to me, I wouldn't mention companies that I've not got any experience of, so that's what I meant. The ones that I did talk about, yes, I've got some experience of them, and uh, we know my views on that. Anyway, moving on swiftly to more positive, calmer waters, I think. <laughs> um, as I said, we're making our way through, and I recently did ICM, and we're getting into the ones that uh, I kind of started off the series with Airfix, which I was um, pretty enthusiastic about, with some reservations, but fairly enthusiastic about Airfix. And, uh, and then we dipped into the rather controversial, ranty, <laughs> less satisfying uh, experiences um, with people like Rival, Edward, very mixed, obviously, Edward's kits I was obviously fairly enthusiastic about, but obviously, massive problems with these decals. And then we got into the likes of um, the the Chinese manufacturers, etc. Now we're coming to the the nice end of the market, I think, <laughs> um, the premium end of the market. And today we're going to talk about let's talk about Zokimura. Now Zokimura are a division of the Volks Company. Uh, the Volks Company is actually um, a group, an uh, incorporated group now, and they were actually set up in 1972, so they are set up the same year as Matchbox, so it's, it's amazing how old they are actually. And they actually originally set up, uh, and still run today, by a gentleman called Hideyuki Shigeta. Uh, and now, some of you will know about this chap, I think one or two of the more experienced models that buy these kits will... Uh, now that he has on his website, the, uh, the Zoki Mura website, he has this thing called the Old Man Blog, where he has a monthly, and it's, it's translated in English, so it's all readable, it's quite interesting. And very amusing as well. Like one or two funny anecdotes uh, from his past life, and it's quite interesting to read. And he does one every month. Um, and this gentleman um, clearly had a big passion. He set up this basically what was a model shop in uh, Kyoto in Japan back in 72 and uh, and he, he sort of grew into it became very popular and, and the business grew and then he decided to branch out into manufacturing toys he became a toy stocking toys and then eventually manufacturing toys and they do do some of these to, to some western eyes seem a little bit odd perhaps because it's a cultural thing that's all just differences but they do a lot of these Japanese dolls and things but then in um, the, the, the brand we're really going to talk about today, Zokimura, uh, as part of the Volks Group, is actually a very new company. It was only set up in uh, 2012, so it's only 11 years in the making. So, And they've gone from strength to strength, and um, it's almost like uh, Wing Nut Wings, um, similar sort of time frame as well, except that Zokimura, I'm very pleased to say, are still with us and seem to be alive and well, you know, and, and thriving. Um, although we didn't see them at Telford this year, which I was a little bit disappointed about, because as I've mentioned in previous videos, they, um, some of you have seen this yourselves and experienced it where these Japanese gentlemen come and uh, uh, Mr. Shigeta actually comes to the show and he personally thanks, or he did do, and in previous years he used to personally thank customers uh, when they were paying at the end and shake their hand and then bow. And he was so respectful and so nice that somebody is that in, invested in their company and their image. Uh, with sincerity, you know, and it's quite a rare thing these days, and I like that. Um, in an age where people buy everything online, um, whether that's the reason that he's not come this year, there were some rumours that they, perhaps they were having a, some difficulties because I, I think that a lot of model companies have had difficulties with finances and shipping and costs, and uh, and the exchange rates in Japan have not been very helpful to them. I think it's been one of the reasons I think that Tamiya have been a bit conservative. But um, then they are, I mentioned Tamiya, they are a direct, direct competitor with Tamiya, but of course they're a much smaller company, tiny company compared to Tamiya. Uh, I mean, I don't know actually what their world turnover is, but we know that Tamiya is, I think, 300 million just on the kit side alone. So uh, I think that's US dollars, I think. 
so they're a big organization and uh, yeah it's a, it's a different kettle of fish really but what is what is striking quite apart from the sort of respectfulness and this uh, passion for his own company with this gentleman and his staff they're all they're all similar you just feel uh, when you meet them that they are very positive proper enthusiastic modelers they're not just box salesmen you know they are invested in the product very much so and it shows in the product and this is why I've been having one or two rants um, against other companies that just don't seem invested in the product and they're just trying to make money out of you any which way they can now it's in, in, interesting when we're talking about money and, and we're talking about finances and things one thing that um, whether this is a deliberate strategy of Zokimura's or or something they felt was necessary or a change of direction I'm not sure but some of you may have noted that their kits um, they, they seem to have actually had a price drop in recent years since about 2021-22 the prices seem much more competitive than they used to be so behind me you've got these are not my kits by the way but you've got the the, uh, the 30 second scale do 335 file uh, and that was a, that was about 100 and, 160 to 180 pounds and i don't know if that's still in production or readily available for monarchs because some of these kits i've noticed when i looked online were quite a little tricky to get hold of one or two of them um because i think they have you know certain production runs for a year or so and then they perhaps wind it down a bit while they move on to the newer products and of course last year we had this um, uh, lovely 132nd scale um, Eric Hartman uh, Messerschmitt BF109 G14 uh, with the Hartman figure initially and then they, they produced it later without the Hartman figure, a resin figure. Um, and that was very popular and I was mighty impressed by that kit I have to say. It, it almost won kit of the year with me and only got pipped at the very late. It was kit of the year for me. I actually, I said that's the best kit of the year. And then in December uh, the uh, Tamiyar F35 showed up and it was so... Uh, although, although I was not personally as interested in the subject, it was so perfectly engineered. Astonishing piece of uh, of, of model uh, engineering and plastic, you know, um, injection moulding. Fantastic. So, uh, th but that was no uh, disgrace at all to the Zokimura product because it was brilliant. Now this year, of course, they have imminently arriving, and it's due any day pretty much, I hope. I keep, keep saying this. Pretty soon we're going to get the their new product, which is the FW190 um, Siegfried Schnell, I think it is. And that comes with a <laughs> initial runs are going to come with the resin figure as well. Um, and the feedback that I'm hearing from those that have got it in other markets in the world is very positive. And I think it's going to be a, a real winner, absolutely knockout. So I thought we'd get into one or two elements of, for those of you that are not very familiar with Zokimura and why I'm so enthusiastic about them. Uh, as one, frankly one of my favourite manufacturers um, it just comes down I think to uh, attention to detail but I thought I would just show you on the we actually have a bit of detail on their website if I zoom you in you can actually see Mr Shigeta here uh, uh, beaming here and he's got it shows his um, he's got these four brands that, oops, sorry Let's try and get rid of those reflections if I can he's got these four brands uh, including the dolls I mentioned uh, and they do art clay products. It's, it's, it's all sort of hobbies and sort of toys and hobbies basically. And there I say is Mr. Shigeta at the bottom of the screen. Um, and the, the, you know they have a passion for their for their business. Um, and I say they they are very invested in it. Uh, and you can look up their uh, website. It's Volks as in Volkswagen, but no no Wagen on the end. Volks.co.jp. So I thought I'd show you that just briefly. Um, so, you know, why am I placing these guys on this sort of, uh, uh, frankly, up there with Tamiya almost, and uh, you might sound a bit of a pedestal. Well, I think it's the attention to detail they put into the kits, really. Now, I'll get the negatives out of the way. I, I always like to start the negatives, and then we'll move on to what I think is so impressive about them. In terms of negatives, there's a couple of things, actually. Um, they do have a habit, and they've, they've done it actually with this... Uh, with this DO335 they have a habit of uh, went through a phase where they were clear uh, moulding some of the sprues in clear plastic so you could have like an open see-through panel and I don't I personally I don't like that it's, it's yeah it's different but 
unfortunately it doesn't really work that well because they have an ejector pins on the inside which you can't really avoid uh, not too easily anyway and of course then they become more visible and it all looks a bit, a bit too toy like I think and I think this is probably coming from their background in toys they're thinking of making it a bit more three dimensional which is to be you know applauded but um, perhaps just having removable panels is the way really so I'm not very keen on that and the only other thing really is people say that the detail is a bit on the soft side, a bit like Tamiya, and maybe not as finely crisp as, as resin. Well, you know, I'm not sure if that's a criticism. Among, uh, you know, in the market against other kits, I don't see that as much of a criticism, really. Um, and the third final criticism, really, that people level at them. Um, and I've got to be honest, I haven't built one yet. I've reviewed lots of them and had lots of them, but I've not actually got around to building one. Now, this, this is actually an interesting point that I should make, because I bet there's a few of you out here in the same situation. Some of us, um, I've seen people actually write this to me in, in one of my previous videos um, earlier this year. Somebody wrote and said something about, um, I'm not sure I could do it justice, a kit like that, and uh, I'd mess it up, and it's too complicated, and uh, blah, blah, blah. So people buy them because they love the detail, some of which I'll show you shortly. <coughs> but they feel perhaps a bit intimidated by them. Um, they are quite a complicated build as well, that's the other thing that, in hand in hand with the, the sheer high part count they tend to have as well. That can put people off, I think, in terms of actually building them, and it's probably been one of the reasons I've not built one so far. But I think I'm going to uh, next year, probably the back end of next year, I'm, pr I'm probably going to build this FW190, I think so. Because I'm doing the, um, I'm going to do the Tamiya Mosquito, and it's the perfect partner for it, quite frankly. Uh, I mean, that, you know, because that, that aircraft that I'm building on the Tamiya Mosquito was shot down at, by an FW 190 near uh, Amiens. Um, so it's a no brainer in a way. So I think I will definitely, because I want to actually have the experience and then I can say that I've done it. I want to enjoy it. And the feedback I say that's coming out from those that where it's just arrived with them is so positive on that kit, I think it'd be fine. However, um, as you'll see, they can be. I've got, I've got their catalogue in front of me. It's actually slightly out of date. This is from two years ago. I'm saying this, but uh, most of it, most of these products are still available. Um, well, for example, I mentioned you've got the Horton, the HO229. They do it in two scales, 48th or 32nd, which is really good. But they do it in two. Uh, I've got to be honest. The, the 48th is, looks pretty daunting. So, what 32nd is like? I dread to think. And then they, they do a lot of extras and interesting add-ons. Um, so the point I was going to make about, which I've sort of skipped over, is basically that it did sort of allude to it with the Horton there. They they tend to have um, quite a long, complicated build because they have they they almost create every part of the aircraft pretty much. So you've got all the ribs and the spars where you end up putting the if you wish you end up putting the the final wing skin on, but you've got all the ribs underneath all, all the um, all the spars, all the ribs are present. So again, this is what intimidates one or two people. I think they find it a bit, a bit daunting, a bit scary, the idea of doing that level of work and the fact that there's so much going to be potentially on display. Um, and that there's obviously opportunity to make mistakes and things go wrong, perhaps. But I don't think we should be, you know, it's like anything in life. You, you've got to have a go at it at some point, sort of thing, you know. Um, and there's a first time for everything, so I'm going to uh, pop my cherry with uh, Zoki Mura next year for sure, and I'll be re re probably reviewing this FW 190 in the very near future as well. But I was going to say the other things that they do, they, they have a, a lot of add-ons which you can get for their kits. Just get my zoom out. They, they do all these um, figures, and they do a lot of aftermarket items like uh, resin parts, resin tyres. And some of the figures, the, the very interesting ones, they have things like barrel cleaning, guys doing barrel cleaning for the guns. In this case, it's the HE Heinkel 219. Uh, and they'll have things like guys who are painting, I just saw it a second ago, where's it gone? Bear with me. Guys who are uh, painting, let me see the chat, ground crew, ground personnel painting. They do lots of interesting, different sort of resin figures that you can get. Which are yeah a bit off the wall some of them and uh, what they got armourers, uh, scramble pilots running for their planes here, things like that you know that are really quite different from what other people are doing. Um, engine maintenance guys, 
tire changing, all sorts of things, all sorts of things. <coughs> Excuse me, and they also do some separate fig figures not connected with specific kits, which a lot of people probably won't have seen. You know, um, things that are a little bit, a little bit different. So they do a wide variety of products, uh, and, and you know, they have a lot of things that support each kit. They have, you see here on the Mustang, you've got P upgrade sets, interior set, uh, and you've got gun base sets. They do a lot of things, and you, a lot of I think a lot of models perhaps not that aware of their own stuff. Uh, they do have a tie-in as well with just, sort of just flicking through to see the various. We've got the Japanese. Uh, this is for the Raid and the Jack. Uh, you've got engine maintenance guys, um, pilot briefings. There's lots and lots of material, so. You know, you can see that again that there's a bit of a passion for the for the actual models there themselves, and they're trying to do things a little bit different, a little bit different. So I've got a couple of examples here, actually, from the file, and we've got here some white metal uh, undercarriage legs for because I can imagine that's quite a heavy model. So I think they've, they've thought it might be might be an option to have these metal struts for your wheels. Comes in this nice box. As you can see, clear on the back so you can see the product. And then we've got turned machine gun set for it as well. In fact, there's quite a few things in there. There's tyres and all sorts. But there they are. Very like the master model type approach, aren't they? And so you can get a lot of detail upgrade parts, but that's additional, you know. That's additional to the main kit. But what, what, you know, why am I so what, why am I so positive about this and so negative about some of the others? Well, you get a lot of incredible detail. Um, now, some people say it's actually too much. <laughs> uh, I suppose you can have too much detail. Let me give you a perfect example, also from the file from its. Uh, I think it's the Daimler engine, isn't it? In this one, um, if you look very carefully, I know it's, it's in the bags here because it's not my not my kit, so I can't take it out. But but look at the engine block. Complete with con rods and pistons. So if I turn it round, you can see the, the con rods there. And you think, oh yeah, it's just moulded to look like con rods. Well, actually, incredibly, it actually has the pistons within the cylinders and the piston rings. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> so you can see that this is going beyond beyond anybody else, frankly, to that level of detail. Uh, and I know that people are going to say, well, you're never going to see that, are you? You're never going to see it. This way. We have a slight focus problem, sorry folks. Just let it sort itself out. There we go. So there you go. Pistons, piston rings, con rods. Absolutely amazing. The lot. It's all there. So I thought that was worth showing. For those of you that are not familiar with them and think, well, you start to see why the prices were what they were, but as I say, they've actually become much more competitive on price. So, for example, uh, last year when this BF109 came out at 30 second scale, they, they, it was noticeably more competitive on price, which is one of the reasons it, it was going to win kit of the year, because it was such, such a good bargain, you know. For the price of a 50-year-old Airfix 24 scale kit, you can actually, for less than that, you could get state-of-the-art, Japanese uh, kit with all you know, the expense spared in terms of details. I thought I'd also show you another couple of extras just while we're talking about it. We've got Luftwaffe seat belts here. Now they, this is where they actually have a tie-in with Edouard. They actually have an agreement with Edouard. I don't know if it says Edouard. Sometimes they say Edouard logo on it as well. They do on that one which has got PE. Perhaps this one it might be HGW, HGW stroke Edward in the Czech Republic. Um, and I'm a big fan of Edward's aftermarket, I've said that many times. So, yeah, you've got here this um, seatbelt set, for example. Now, these are all extras, so I must make that clear. They're not included. Um, but they are very, very finely done. And over on this side, we've got some fantastic, and this is definitely done by Edward for them, it actually says so on the back. So you can actually see here, beautiful instruments, absolutely fantastic. And you can see there we have the actual, where my thumb is, and you can see we've got the Edward logo. Uh -huh. Super Wing option. So they call it Super Wing Series, their aircraft, don't they? SWS. 
And they're very, very fine products indeed. And I'm going to just show you for those that have never seen them um, an example of their instructions. And this is where we're in a completely different league from some of the ones I've had a real moan about. Um, and you will understand better, those of you that haven't seen these, why uh, I rate these very highly. Now, first of all, they have a habit of making them look very oldie-worldie, like an actual instruction manual from the 1940s. And they have this, I'm not sure about this, it's, you could say it's a bit contrived, but I quite like it, I've got to be honest. It's all part of the package. And what they do is they give you absolutely everything in terms of information. They tell you the history of the plane, and they give you pictures and diagrams, uh, photographs from the actual aircraft. Um, and they show you so many different ways of um, comprehending the construction of the kit. So you'll see a lot of diagrams before, during, after fitting certain components. So you're in no doubt, you know, this is not like my famous, I'm not going to say the word, but I did this kit this year that everybody knows about now, where the, the instructions really were dire, and, and really were, what, what was fundamentally a good kit on trying to get out was just drowned in the worst instructions you've ever seen, really, uh, in terms of a kit of the price. For, for its price, it was lamentable. Great actual illustrations, but no joined up thinking, showing what was actually supposed to happen and where things were supposed to be fitted. Now in here, we have the opposite. We have, we have got, this gives literally chapter and verse. So we've got lovely diagrams, talks, they tend to put Japanese first and then English, but it's all there for you. Um, talks about the various construction stages here, which is quite helpful, like a quick guide. Whoops. But what we get is a, a completely comprehensive and detailed explanation about what we're building, how we're building it, and how it should look once the building of each stage has been completed. And they have things like this bottom view. So it has a detailed, accurate image showing what it should look like from different angles. So that there are it helps you avoid alignment issues here top view. So building up a, a cockpit here of course. And I won't go through the whole thing, I'm just trying to give you some really good examples. Here you've got um, an option, different types of instruments. And it's telling you what the colours should look like. There's colour photographs, you're left in no doubt at all. This is what it should look like when you've finished each section. And so it goes on. So, again, it's a classical instruction and then it has a colour photograph at the end saying that's what it should look like. It's absolutely perfect, this. I can't think how they could improve on it, really. People do say it makes it a bit busy, which I think is fair comment, but that's inevitable if they're giving you lots of information. So here you've got, you're going to work on the engine and it even starts by showing you what it'll look like when you're done in colour. So you really, even the colours you know what it should look like, it's absolutely perfect. Well, I have to say, we talked about this, didn't we? Those of you who are defending border model, jeez, you know, lovely plastic, but they're giving you half a product. And they're charging pretty much the same price as these are. I mean, I think I mentioned that uh, in the case of the 109 and the FW190, because they've got this new competitive pricing from Zokimura, it's within £5 or thereabouts, at these sort of local retail prices. Um, of the border kit at 35th, which is a silly scale. You can't get aftermarket for it, and you can't understand what colours anything's supposed to be. You've got to spend weeks researching. Come on. I'm all for researching, if you, but researching is like, when I did the Sea Harrier, I did a lot of research about specific aircraft, any battle damage, for example, like I didn't have it on that particular aircraft, but had I done the Dave Morgan uh, number 14, uh, somebody else did, didn't they, in a big scale, I won't name, name names, but uh, somebody else did it and didn't seem to know that it should have had a, <laughs> a slightly repaired tail, which would have been a great opportunity for a bit of weathering and uh, showing them where they'd fixed the battle damage from the first uh, raid on the 2nd of May. Anyway, I'm digressing, but, but that's the research you should be doing, researching squadrons and weapons and all that. You shouldn't have to research the very basics of, of things like the colour of the instrument panel and you know the colour of the engine come on that's absolutely ridiculous now these gentlemen are not doing that they aren't they research everything they've done it once and they've communicated it in this fantastic 
publication, which is all which is worth keeping as a souvenir. If you don't want to throw this away at the end of the bill, I would suggest. You know, here's your um, <laughs> here's your engine cylinder going together, complete with the con rods from the piston sticking out, uh, which you can probably see there. There they are, our piston con rods heading towards the uh, the crank uh, uh, crank. Uh, the crank itself within the crankcase. Uh, you don't see the crank, of course, but the, yeah, you can say, well, it, you actually have to match up the connecting rods as well. They clip in, so the, it just makes you feel. Again, it's a bit like I talked about. Um, sorry, that I, I did talk previously about when I built that Tamiya motorbike. It didn't feel like a model kit anymore. It was something, and again, that was reasonably priced. It was something exceptional. It went beyond, you know, it. it for the money, it, it delivered extra experiences. It made me feel I was building a motorbike. And I think it feels a bit like this with these. You feel like you're building an aircraft. And it's, you know, it's not for everybody, I realise. You, you're not going to do this in a weekend. <laughs> or even a week, or a month, frankly. Well, unless you're a very quick builder. But, I don't know, it's just... It, it, it's the ultimate expression of a model kit, isn't it? You're almost building a miniature aircraft. And yes, if you want a simple, straightforward build, then that's probably not the one for you. If you wanted one of these, you'd probably have to go down to the Tamiya 48 scale. Nice quick build. But come on. Again, the way that they are illustrating these uh, images and diagrams here. And showing you, stage by stage, this is what it should look like. This is a very complex build. But they're making it relatively straightforward. Relatively. By telling you, you know, you're not fumbling about in the dark. I said to somebody at the weekend, um, again, grumbling about that sea harry that I built, but I said that the instructions were so bad, it was almost like you say, I'm going to go for a swim in the local swimming pool. And when you get there, the pool is full of treacle. The minute you jump in, realise this, they put the lights out. <laughs> you're fumbling around the dark. And it was like that. If you didn't have reference material, and a lot of it, I had to do a lot. I've never done more reference uh, research and for a Harrier, which is a relatively, for a Brit anyway, relatively common, it was like every element had to be researched and it shouldn't be like that. It should be like this, okay? So, you know, the spark plug, spark plug cords, look at this. That's incredible. And it, it's, you know, telling you the number, telling you which paint colours. Again, you know, it's just crystal clear, it's all there and on it goes. And it goes on and on. And then you get to things that are very, very critical. Zoom you out a bit. You get to things that are very critical in terms of um, dimensions and angles and things like that. As you, <coughs> moving through the build, and this is in most. Of this is not exceptional. This is not unique to this kit. This is the way Zokimura present their their product. Um, you know, I mean, I just love this. It, it's like um, a proper engineering diagram. And it says at the end there, left side inner view, yeah? Left side inner view of this component. And at the bottom, left side view, and you know, left side, right side. Over here, we've got the front of the engine, uh, well, it's the rear of the engine, I should say. It's hard to know with this plane, because it's got one at the front, one at the back, hasn't it? <laughs> well, or push you, pull me, as they used to call it. But it's showing you these diagrams with absolute clarity, you know? It's the, it's, the, it's the extreme of clarity, but there's nothing wrong with something extreme. Um, as long as you take your time, it's as clear as day. You've just got to not try and rush through it and make sure you follow the steps that they recommend. And it's all there. And when you get to things like the wings, you know, it's going to talk about very important things like alignments, and uh, here we go, angle of the landing gears, even gives you the angle in degrees and the diagram, you know, you're not, not going to be left with any question marks in your head at all. So, you know, putting on the cowls, this is what it will look like with a proper colour photograph. The, there is no room for doubt, it's there, it's eliminated. They've done all this incredible work, not only in the researching of the, of the actual subject, but in the researching of their engineering and the, you can see that this has been quality controlled in a way 
arguably, you know, tested and quality controlled and test fitted and test built in a way that probably nobody else does, probably not even Tammy in fairness. Now, there you go, that's just a, a example, but it's quite a typical one. Now, nobody else is quite going to those, those lengths, even Tamiyar, but Tamiyar are, um, they're very focused on making it as easy to build as possible. That's, that's what they do, and their engineering supports that. With these guys, you feel it's almost an obsession. <laughs> a little bit, it goes a little bit further in this respect. Um, now, in terms of subject uh, matter, um, they have some quite interesting aircraft, you know, in their catalogue. They, they tend to be a slightly... They don't go for the obvious choices. Yes, they have got Phantoms and Mustangs, but they've got a lot of other stuff as well, like this Horton and the, the File and... Um, what is it? The Hank or the yu who is it? There's all sorts of things. The Henschel that are slightly off off the, the main path, shall we say. But some of you will be shouting at the camera saying, oh, hang on a minute, Peter, they're just in a 109 and they're just in a 190. Now here's, here's a point that some of you may have um, not thought of. Well, there's a reason they've done those two kits that are very uh, populist, you might say. Um, you might argue we didn't really need them, I don't know. But I think we needed a really good quality 190, in fairness, and less so a 109. But it's like an open goal to Zokimura. Um, and this is something I'll probably chat about with the, uh, the Tamiya talk. Tamiya sort of have done so well with theirs, and I'm not, not going to duplicate what I'm going to say in that video, but... They suddenly sort of stopped and left this gap, didn't they, in their um, their offering with no 190 or no 109. And Zokimura, I think, probably wasn't their first choice looking at their back catalogue in the last 11 years while they've been trading as uh, SWS. They they didn't go in for that. They didn't go in for that. They probably assumed that Tamiya, as, as I did really, they probably assumed that Tamiya were going to do that, you know. And they just haven't. So they've just thought, well, OK, well, blow you then. We'll, we'll do it. And they've done it really, really well. So both those models uh, break almost with their tradition a little bit uh, and go for something that's very, very, uh, very, very uh, saleable, which is probably one of the things that's probably helped, you know, got their attention is that it will sell. The FW190 will sell like hotcakes. And I'm confident it's going to be a great kit. <clears throat> very confident. But you have to blame Tamiya for that because they've sort of left the door open, haven't they? The back door's been wide open. Zukimura have sneaked in and said, well, we'll occupy this space, thanks very much. And who can blame them? I mean, hats off to them for, for having the, the seeing the opportunity and, and taking advantage of it in such a, a positive and impressive way. So there we go. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say they're my favourite model company overall. So there, there are one or two little reservations and some of the subjects are not my cup of tea. But the ones that are... They're just amazing kits, you know, and if you've never had one, you should definitely get one, even if you only put it in the stash for a couple of years, to sell it on. But I would urge you to build one, because I'm going to, you know, I'm guilty of not building one, but I'm going to change that, and I'm going to really enjoy it, I think, that, that 190. I didn't go for the 109, because I'd already got, I'd already got the G6, albeit in 48 scale, and it's just a bit too similar, really. But a, a 190, I've got a 48 scale, but it's an old Tamiya one, it's nothing special, really. Um, it's okay, but it would be really nice to go with this Mosquito, I think this 190, I think they just, the timing is perfect for the two of them to go together. Ultimately in my cabinet, if I can make them fit. <laughs> anyway, there we go, so I just wanted to walk you through and maybe open your eyes if you haven't seen them already, or, or just, just reiterate and remind people. Um, I do hope these guys come back to Telford in the future, because I'm sure I speak for most of us, if not all, that saying that they're very welcome, you know, and that the way they go about their business is there's something very old school in a very good way about what they're doing, um, but they're using, there's nothing old school about what they're producing. It's very, very up-to-date, latest technology, beautiful extrusion, um, injection molding. Uh, they're right up there with the very best, one of the best. I, I'd probably rank them as, as, yeah, one of my probably up there with ICM. I think this year, my view is probably that, I'm just talking generally here, Tamiya is still probably the leader, but these guys are a bit more niche, but they are very, very, they're, they're champing at Tamiya's back heels, you know. And I just love the way they go about it. There's something, it's more than just a model, it's an experience. You're learning, it's an educational experience, you're learning history, you're learning about engineering. It's just so much more. 
and for not really much more money, if any money, more money at all. It's just, it's a no-brainer. Now they've, because they were sort of selling kits like, you know, the size of the FW190. They were about £130, sort of Tamiyan price or slightly more. Now they're much more competitive, you know. Under £100 they're coming in out of thereabouts. 100 or just under. You should definitely look into it. And if you haven't got yourself an FW190 pre-ordered, I would urge you to think about it. Give yourself a treat for Christmas or get the, the wife or, you know, a relative to buy it for you or something like that. Because it's definitely something you're going to enjoy having, I think. It's going to be become a favourite in your stash, one of them anyway. So there we go, Zokimura, I thought you'd give you a, just a potted idea of my views on them and uh, you know, I've been accused of all sorts of, there's some strange comments come, I've been accused of uh, uh, of being sort of, well, I won't quote what was said, but some of the, some of the suggestions, as though I was anti-Chinese, there's nothing, nothing to do with being anti-anything, the only thing I'm anti is bad quality. Uh, and I was always going to do a talk about Zokimura, and I was always going to do a talk about Tamiya. If you haven't seen that one yet, it's 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 out there. It's coming very soon, um, and that's probably going to be the longest talk actually, because it's they're a big company with a big product range and lots to talk about. But I thought these guys really deserved a big thumbs up. You know, um, I just love the way they go about it. It's almost like my hero, Ron Dennis, the Formula One guy that used to run McLaren. He was, he was very stickler for OCD and he was an obsession with quality and all this kind of thing. It's almost like he became Japanese, you know. And uh, this Mr. Shigeta is like a Japanese Ron Dennis, really. And it's just got that, that same approach that quality is everything. You know, we want to give the customer a unique experience. They're not just pumping out second-rate kits, you know, with, with albeit with good, you know, plastic and, and nothing else considered, which is what a lot of these guys I moaned about in China are doing. Not all of them, not all of them. We talked about Meng, we talked about Rubicon, amongst others, you know, and Great Wall Hobby, a bit up and down at the moment, but they have, they have good days and bad days sort of thing. But some of them are just bone idle and people like Border and Kinetic are rank amongst those and Trumpeter and others, but you've already seen that video, so I won't, I won't ramble on. I just think that this is, not everybody can do this, you know, and we have to be careful that, as I mentioned Wingnut Wings earlier on, and we don't want them to end up like Wingnut Wings, not be able to make any money, or, or we don't know exactly what happened there, it's a bit of a shrouded in mystery, but um, these guys really do deserve your support, if you can afford one, even if it's only 48 scale, that's, I mean, that Horton's a fantastic little kit, and it's got so much going for it, you know, it's got a, a ton of detail in it, it's just astonishing for a 48 scale, and again, it's got all the ribs and the fuel tanks are all, you can have them exposed, and it's astonishing, it's astonishing, so if you don't want something too big, get something like that, and, and I'd like to see them do more in 48 scale, that would be my tip to to Mr. Shigeta in the future, look at the 48 scale, see if you can do more things along those lines, you know, and again, interesting subjects that are perhaps, perhaps a bit different from what other people are doing. So, I'm going to leave that, leave you with that thought, um, I hope you found it interesting, um, I hope you'll have a look at their range, uh, and support them by buying some of their products, because as I say, we don't want, don't want them to end up like wing nut wings, We'd like, I'd like to see this company really, uh, they represent, in some respects, they represent the very best of the industry I think. Um, not perfect, none of them are, but, but very very high standards and a, a lovely approach and a nice a nice uh, CEO who's got the right attitude and you know he's trying to, uh, he's clearly got a, a respect and a like of his customers and not a lot of them are like that. There's, there's a lot that don't have any respect for the customer at all it seems to me. Many of them do, don't get me wrong, I'm not generalising here, but we know the ones I've talked about. Um, that are just, you know, one in Germany, for example, and so on. But no, I think that Zoki Mora, part of the Volks Corporation, absolutely fantastic company. Love their approach, and I, I'd I hope we see them at Telford again, and I'd love to see more products coming out in the near future. So who knows what we might get next year? Let's keep fingers crossed it's something exciting again. In the meantime, until you see me again with the Fock of Wolf 190 review coming soon. I hope. <laughs> Until then, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was interesting. And uh, stay warm, stay safe. If you don't see it before Christmas, probably will. <laughs> but anyway, enjoy your Christmas break and hope to see you in the very near future. In the meantime, thanks a lot and bye for now.